and there we are happy tuesday you are listening to real talk with karen stacy live on miami mike radio.com and i just want to say like holy crap today is our last show well my last show of 2018 can you believe this i am so blessed i started my show in march of 2018 thank you i everybody i'm wearing a shirt that might be a little offensive to everybody but since everybody is such a like everybody's offended by everything my shirt has a b on it it says b is for bitch so um I know everybody is offended by everything. It's baby, it's cold outside, Rudolph, this one, that one. You know, it is what it is. So uh, I kind of am making my statement today and not for any other reason, but because I think people really need to lighten up and not be so offended by everything that goes on in the world these days. Um, You got to roll with it a little bit. So as I said, today is the last, my last show of 2018. And I just want to take a minute to say thank you so much to first Miami Mike and and the Miami Mike family, of course. Um, and second to you, because if you guys weren't tuned in week after week, month after month, uh, I would be talking to myself. So I appreciate the fact that you guys have tuned in Um, I appreciate the fact that I have some loyal listeners, um, and you know, it's very humbling. I I do go out and meet people and I I am very humbled, uh, by the response and the support. So I just want to say a big thank you to everyone out there listening to MiamiMikeRadio.com and your support. Um, tonight I am going to be ending a few minutes before nine because my little man is has been homesick for two days now, unfortunately. I took him out with me on um, Sunday. There was a shopping event uh, with events by Tia Maria. And she was gracious enough to give my son a little table. And he made uh, chokers and uh, bracelets. And he, um, he sold them there so uh unfortunately at the end of the day he was like mommy i feel a little stuffy and that was the beginning of the end and he has been home uh yesterday and today unfortunately all stuffed up and absolutely miserable his little nose is all red his face is all red so i need to make sure i end my show a few minutes earlier so i can climb into bed with him uh so that he can fall asleep and god willing he will be going to school tomorrow because um This is not the week for him not to be going to school. I mean, of course, I want him to be well, but it's also not the week for him not to be going to school because I have 3,229 things to do for the holidays. And of course, when you're home with a sick kid, it kind of prevents that from happening. Um, So I just want to remind you guys that, uh, you know, we had last week's show. Come on in. Come on in. My my guest just got here. You want to pull in a little bit, Hello. so just be careful that you don't. Ra- everything is like, pl- what? Oh Play- my gosh! Yes, this is so nice. It's a rattle. Yeah. And, we got a rattle and hum going on over here. <laughs> it's a delicate balance, but yes. it looks good. You guys are talking to Chrissy Mayer. Hi. She just got off the train and and eloquently and quietly uh, walked in. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, I was just telling everybody that this is actually my last show of this year because wow. next Tuesday is Christmas. Yeah. So I sh- hope to have eaten too much and um, hopefully drank too much. Yeah, that is also <laughs> my plan. Yes, yeah, that's that's definitely the plan. I, are you freezing? Um, No, I'm probably, you know, I think I'm OK. okay. Yeah. You're, you're, you know what? If you want, you're a little close to the mic. If you if you like if you want to pull the chair back. A tiny OK, bit, I don't want to be too hot on the mic. No. Yeah, we don't want to be. <laughs> we don't want to kill everybody. <laughs> you're so cute. You're all in pink. You look like the cool oh, thank mom. You. Well, see, I am. But look, you see my shirt. That's really cute. B is for bitch. That's my shirt. <laughs> I love it. I feel like I should have. I should have put lipstick on in the Uber. Oh, that's okay. We we forgive you. We're, this is like a lipstick free zone. We're good. Okay. This is good. <laughs> this is very cute. Sure, Karen. Are, you, are you close enough to me? Uh, so you're in yeah. the frame here. Okay. Let's just. I just didn't want everybody to get. Everybody tells me to move the mic when we do Facebook Live, but the mic is so that everybody on Miami bleh, Miami Mic Radio can hear us. So that's kind of important. So unfortunately, Facebook Live is just an added bonus. Yeah. That they can see us while while we're speaking. 
Um, so before I start going in, and I, we're gonna we're gonna talk. Obviously, first of all, take a deep breath because I know you've had uh, a long day. It's okay. Oh no, it's all good. Yeah. I said I said to her, "Would you like a glass of wine?" And she said, "I'm good." And I said, well, you've been running like a chicken without a head all day. She goes, I always run like a chicken. So Yeah, yeah. It's, unfortunately, that's like, yeah, a typical day is like I work till like five or six or something. And then I go do like at least like one, two, sometimes three comedy shows and sometimes a podcast in there. And like, and now you mix that in with like, OK, holiday stuff. And oh, I know. So it can't be easy. Yeah. It definitely can't be easy. Um, but I did want, I just needed to address something before I, I get in, we go in good with you here. And I just wanted to, you know, last week, um, I did a show, um, we had two ladies on and it was, um, a very graphic adult show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of feedback on both ends, some good, you know, just a lot of feedback. Mm -hmm. And I just want to remind everybody that, um, you know, this is real talk. And therefore, it's like a judgment-free zone. We can all respectfully agree to disagree. So I welcome all of your input on social media, private messages, emails, and such. But just please be mindful. It takes a lot for anyone to come on this show and, you know, talk to listeners, all of you, all of the people listening on Miami Mike Radio, we are worldwide. It takes a lot to come on here and just talk and share your own views, right? You're not here representing a company. You're here representing you and what you feel. So it's very, you know, you have to be in a welcoming environment in order to do that. Because if not, you're going to feel judged. You're going to feel... Now, everybody's saying that I'm frozen on Facebook, which I'm not sure exactly. Maybe. Oh, not that we look frozen. No, I, it says frozen. Oh. That's what it says. And I'm not really sure. What, Maybe they need to just shut it off and reboot. I have no idea. <laughs> but that's the second person that said that. So I don't know if I need to. Maybe I need to shut it off and reboot. <laughs> um but I just wanted to, you know, again, say that, um, you know, to please be respectful uh, when posting, as I appreciate all the input, whether you agree or disagree. Um, it's all about communication and seeing things from all sides. Um, I'm going to see if I can address this and see if there is something you think there's something I can do. I mean, 12 people are watching, so yeah, it should people be are there. working. So, Catherine, you just came on. Are you able to hear and see us? Is it frozen? Because I'm hearing, um, I'm, I'm looking at the feed. Rob, can you hear us and see us? Okay, Amelia, Amelia. thank you, because... Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. I'm doing my best here. You know, um, my tech stuff is not really... Uh, yeah, you know, it's not uh, it's not all that. Oh, look, I'm trying to do my light thing. Where you should we this? put this? Oh, OK. Maybe. I have one of those. actually. Do you? Yeah. Let's see. Ooh, how oh, how does my hand look? Oh, is that better? See, now you're brighter. I'm darker. It's all fine. Thank you so much, everybody, for your input. OK, so you heard my my um, well, what should we call that? Um, uh, your announcements or yeah, your no, PSA? But it, I don't yeah, know. but it was like uh, uh, what's the word? I'm, I don't know the word I'm looking for. But anyway, just uh, let's all be kind and, and nice to one another on your the spiel. Feeds. And, um, you Why know, somebody somebody say something mean. No, it's just that we had a lot going on last week and a lot of see, this is real talk. So. You may feel one way and I may feel another way. So you're, that's okay. Yeah. So we can all agree to disagree is what I'm trying to say. And of so course. when people are, are brave enough to come on here and speak and, and, and speak their truth, then we should be um, kind enough to allow them to do that without attacking them. So that's yeah. what I mean. Whenever I, people go real talk when you're coming on my show, I'm not throwing you under a bus. Right. We're just going to talk real. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. So you are listening to Real Talk with Karen Stacy live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. And my guest tonight is 
Chrissy Mayer. Hello. <laughs> it's so great to be here. We're in a barn. This is so cute. Yes, this is, they call this my she cave. This is great. Isn't it's, it? It's, it's like, like a my real, own little oasis. It's like a lady cave. Yeah, yeah, that's what they call it, like a she cave, right? And I, I love the, the, all the wood and everything. This is great. It also looks like you could get their hair done <laughs> yep. here. Indeed. This is great. I love it. Indeed. Yeah. Wow. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> so it was kind of funny, right? Because you, this is the first time you and me are physically meeting. You just walked in while I was live on the air. <laughs> I was, and, yeah. and you were like, where am I walking to? Where am I going in the pitch black outside? Thank God right? you said barn yep. because like the you guy, the, first the Uber driver went down a different like road. I know it. They and, always uh, go over to the next road. And I was like, no. And I was like trying not to like be like, you know, that bitch. Like, you don't know where you're going. <laughs> it's like, I don't know where I'm going either. Either. I mean, right. just following the map, and and then he was just like here, and and I was like, let me just get out. Like, I think this is it. So right, yeah. right. Well, I'm glad, and that's why I told you to just walk straight back because I knew that that was going to happen. Um, and unfortunately, while um on the on the show live, I can't really get out there and start uh, you know doing stuff. Oh so, yeah, you know, it makes it a little difficult. So um. Anyway, what was cool was that since I said this is the first time that you and I are meeting, I had gotten a private message on Facebook um, a few months ago, and there was a gentleman (laughs) introducing you and I and saying, like, I think Chrissy would be a great guest on your show. Um, And I didn't know who he was. I think we're friends on Facebook, but, you know, everybody's friends on Facebook now, right? So um, when I spoke to you yesterday, we determined that that was your boyfriend. Yes, that was my boyfriend. He he knew you because he is from Westchester and he was like already kind of a fan of yours and knew about the show. And so he connected both of us. Yeah. And it's very exciting. So thank you, Frank. Who's, I think, maybe Christmas shopping now. Yes, because I tried to get him on the show. So either he conveniently is going (laughs) Christmas shopping or uh, he really did have to go Christmas shopping. Um, But before we... We're going to talk about Frank. Um, But before we talk about Frank, we need to know a little bit about you because obviously some of my listeners and and viewers don't know who you are. So um, I always say, who are you? So (laughs) tell everybody who Chrissy is. Okay. I am a stand-up comedian. Uh, I perf- I'm like based in New York City, which means like most of my shows are are in the city. But I live in White Plains, and I perform like really wherever they'll have me. Like I'm from Long Island, so I'm used to kind of um, like I'm used to the Long Island Railroad. I'm used to the Metro North. Like a lot of uh, commuting around and. Yeah, you're um, a trooper. You took the train over here. I couldn't find. I don't even know where. I, like, I don't even know where the train is. Like, I'm such a spaz. It's not that bad. It's right near the Yonkers Brewing Company. Is like all right, the Yonkers yeah, no, I, yeah. Metro well, North. Let's train. not give everybody <laughs> directions to my oh, house. Okay. I mean, that's everyone knows <laughs> no, where the Yonkers train I'm station teasing. is. Yes, yeah, I would I, not. Course, I will give course. no more directions. No, of course. No, but I know what you're saying. <laughs> it, you know, I I know it seems to be easy, and I'm gonna have to. My my one of my best friends was saying you're gonna learn eventually because your son is gonna start taking this transit Aww. and you're gonna have to know you know these things which i'm not ready for because he's only nine so i mean i oh, don't yeah. have to know he's yet he's got but, time uh, but it's gonna come is what she was trying to tell me because she was actually telling me this is a funny story she would go out in certain places that were close to the train station and her son was of age so he would get off the train and drive her home so she could drink while she oh was my out. gosh <laughs> wow she's like you got to train him and know where the, all the train stations are so this way you could drink and he could be the designated driver yeah so these are the things i'm aspiring to oh <laughs> yeah it's probably hard being a mom i give you credit um yeah i'm guessing you don't have any kids huh i am a step girlfriend my boyfriend has a 7 year old son so oh, okay yeah. okay and can i ask how old you are uh i'm 35 Wow, I, you! I thought you were like twenty. I mean, you really look so young. Thank you. I thought you were like twenty something. That doesn't leave the room, okay? No, I'm serious. I'm twenty. I'll, I'll, I'm twenty eight. I meant to say that I'm twenty. No, seriously. Yeah. Like, thank you. I, I'm in awe. I really thought you were younger than that. Totally. Oh, wow, thank you. Yeah. Um, thirty five. You go, girl. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I can run for president. Not. No, I never would do that. Um, so I'm doing stand up for like eight years. Before that, I did improv for like. Four years, which if you don't know what improv is, it's like a combination of like acting and theater. It's like that show, Whose Line Is It Anyway, if you've ever heard Love of that. Love that show, yeah. Um, 
And uh, then I did a one woman show somewhere in the middle there. Then I started doing stand up. So um, I've been doing that for the last eight years and really seriously with goals and like truly giving a shit for the last like three, four years. Okay. So um, yeah, like, you know, a few years into it, like you start, you know, getting more credits, you start getting better, you start going on the road more, you start like getting booked at different clubs and doing more festivals. So you travel, you know, you end up traveling around quite a bit, just, you know, performing at different shows. And this year I did like a festival in Rhode Island called the Rogue Island Comedy Festival. Oh, that's cool. Um, God, like, I mean, every couple of years it seems like I'm doing a different festival. Um, my first sort of like big credit, I guess, was like getting on the Wendy Williams show. They oh, ha- nice. They had a remote segment called Street Talk, and I would be on camera for that. And then I eventually wrote jokes for the segment because they were like, oh, we really like your stuff. Send us like 60 jokes every week based on these pop culture topics. And uh, it's not like a lot of money. It's like, I don't know, 100 bucks or something. But it's, it's like a cool experience. It's exciting. I yeah. Yeah. I am um, actually a lot of people have told me that um, that that I'm, I'm a cross between Wendy Williams and uh, uh, like who, what did they say? The cool Wendy? mom from Mean Girls. No, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like when they were saying like my my style, like, you know, and I, I don't know. I watched Wendy Williams. I don't know if, 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 you know, I mean, I like her. She's straight up. And I guess that's what they were talking about. But I forgot. They said like Wendy Williams and like um, somebody else hot. I, I don't know if they were, but thank you. I don't know if they were hot. I was kind of like, really? Like, those two? And I was like, okay. Yeah. I don't like it. When, like, sometimes when you get, like, a good comparison, you're like, great. But then when someone gives you a weird one, yeah, you're, you're like, like, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, somebody said once, like, oh, you look like Nicole Kidman. And I was like, she's very tall and, like, lithe and, like, you know, just sort of ethereal. And She's I'm, very you know. sexy. I yeah, think. she's hot. Yeah. Yeah, 100% would do. Right. <laughs> so well, that one you liked, I'm assuming. I did like it, but I also didn't, like, see a super resemblance. And then, like, one time I was getting my nails done and the lady's like, oh, you look like an Emma Stone. And I was like, she's probably just never just seen a redheaded girl before. <laughs> I was like, I don't look like Emma Stone. They don't know what the redheaded stepchild looked like, huh? Yeah. I was like, thank you. I'll take it. But yeah, I gotcha. I know. I listen. You, you hear it all, right? Um, mm-hmm. But it is what it is. I mean, I've gotten everything. You know. Oh, you sound like the nanny. Um, oh, okay. Jo- maybe it was Joan Rivers. Um, they were saying uh, like Wendy Williams meets Dr. Ruth meets Joan Rivers. I don't know. But they were all good names. So yeah. I, I mean like I'm okay with People that. People with careers. It's good to be That's true. That, that's true. That's true. A strong, good woman uh, I'm all good with. Um, now, yeah. okay, so that you do all your comedy and we are going to talk about where people can find you and all of that. Um, but let's talk about like the nitty gritty. Okay. So now you just rushed here on the train and got here late because? Well, uh, it's like a couple of reasons. Like I had to work a little bit later than I thought I would. Um, just like doing this thing that I always do where I think I have time to do five things <laughs> and really I have time to do one thing. Um <laughs> And just like, you know, not being familiar with like the, this specific train line. Because uh-huh. usually uh, there's like, for my train line, when I go to White Plains, like there are trains every sometimes three, five, you know, seven minutes. Okay. And then I caught, I went to Grand Central and caught it at a time where the next one was like 17 minutes later. So it was like, ah, that was like my. Right. But but time. I was kind of I I wasn't rubbing in that you were late I I was I was it late for a everybody <laughs> I was, I was late. saying it for a reason the reason why I was saying it was because you just came from your day job correct mm-hmm. so if if I'm not mistaken you had planned to leave earlier than you did mm-hmm. and you were detained and were unable to leave is <laughs> detained that correct? and retained yeah yes, detained <laughs> retained like my job is great in some ways because my boss. Um, you know, he's older and he travels a lot and he does not, you know, he's 75. He doesn't work like a full, full day. Like there are some times that he will like leave right after lunch, which is what I was hoping. Right. I was going to say, he works today. a full day when you have to be on a show it's at 7 like, p.m. It's like he can smell like when I have something to do and, and like, he'll just he'll be like, oh, this is four things and FedEx this and, you know, make a hair appointment for me. And then you're like, ha, ah, it's all like normal shit. Cause it's like, I'm an executive assistant, which is like. 
like being a secretary, like being a personal assistant. Um, it's like work and personal together, and it's just me. So it's not like there's somebody else in his life that will do these things. Like, yes, we could get a temp, but like, you know, the I work for a publishing company, and they they don't really like doing that. And he's you know older; he doesn't want to get used. To, obviously, he doesn't want a new person. He and I'm super like people pleasing already, so like. I already have the tendency to like give and give and give and like always put myself last. So it's like this perfect storm of like demanding dude who's like kind of a baby. Most of the time's nice, but like when he wants something, he wants it now. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, is he, aren't <laughs> all men like that? <laughs> oh yes, I mean he's just a regular man. Um, and like me being like, ah, oh, like you know, I've been fired from jobs before like I've been fired like four times like so maybe in the back of my mind is like that fear plus like the fear my parents instilled in me which is like you have to listen to your boss you have to do what he says which and what was not instilled was stand up for yourself you know ask for what you deserve which is like you know your regular ass vacation days taking a sick day like I took a sick day once this year and he like gave me shit for it he was like oh you better like stay out of the clubs like meaning the comedy clubs and I was like Ugh, buddy like I and first of all I wasn't even sick like I just took I took the day off to do because it was a New York comedy festival and I had like a bunch of I had to go to Sirius XM I had to do like a bunch of sh- radio things and then get ready for the show itself so I wasn't even really sick but I took the one day and he was like oh you better stay at which is so out of line like the, he kind of has no boundaries like my therapist because I send all these I screenshot everything and send it to my therapist. And I'm like, oh, my God, what do you think? And she's like, oh, my God, he has no boundaries. This is crazy. He's, you know, he doesn't appreciate you. And so Those that are helps Those are definitely therapy words. <laughs> yeah. No boundaries. You must establish boundaries. Those are definitely therapy words. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah. And, and so w- w- that's what I was going to talk about. So, you know, you said basically you kind of have a shitty boss, right? <sighs> it's hard for me to say shitty because, like, right, you always have, like, the parts of your like yeah you should your boss shouldn't be like making you feel bad for taking a sick day first of all i haven't even taken i'm supposed to get like i was gonna ask you how many sick days are you allowed i think new york state law allows you to have five that you get paid for right that's what my hr person told me and then don't you also have vacation days as well then there's vacation days and then there's personal days so like so if you were out one day yeah of all of those days you could have been out uh, you know doing whatever and yeah. it's nobody's business. You own that exactly. day. Like, so, you know. Other jobs I've worked in, because that's the thing, when there's a lot of coworkers around and everybody's taking days off and, like, right. doing what you do, it's normalized. But since it's just me and him, it's like I'm in this sort of, like, Stockholm-y, syndrome like... Right, he's uh, right there. Like, yeah. Right. And, uh, and that's my 2019 resolution is to, like, <laughs> take more days for myself and, like... You know, like I, I had 10 vacation days left for the rest of the year. My HR person was like, you have to use them this month. And then I was, I tried to tell my boss, I'm like, look, I have all these days. And like, just cut me off if this is su- super boring. Because no, I feel like okay. it sounds boring. But I was like, I need to take these days before the end of December. Which means my last day is the 14th. Which means this whole week I should have been off. And my boss was basically like, no, the whole reason that you're here is because I'm here. And I don't leave till the 23rd. So he said, he calls the HR ladies like above him like above her boss and basically was like, yeah, we're going to roll over her days. And I was like, okay, but it sucks. Cause it's just like, like, yeah, I'm sure I'll, I'll take the days now in January, but I just don't like that feeling. Like he just controlled can just dictate. Everything. I think I need to give you this shirt. Oh, I'll <laughs> be sh- as for bitch. <laughs> I think you need to put this shirt on and maybe we met for a reason because I will tell you, I know you said you have issues standing up for yourself that's not an issue I have. So um, I can help you with that. Cool. Because, you know, and, and it's unfortunately, I think that that's a huge thing in, in this world today too, especially in the workplace. Um, I remember, you know, like when I was doing hair all the time and I had younger, um, you know, clients and uh, they were working like 80 hour weeks, mm-hmm. but getting paid for 40 hour weeks. Oh, yeah. And I was like, if you're going to stay there for 80 hours, you need to be compensated for 80 hours. And they said, no, Karen, you know, now if you don't do 80 hours and get paid for 40, somebody else will have your job. 
And that's awful because now you guys got to do more. Well, you're not you're not that much younger than me, but now the, the, that generation has to do so much more now. You have to get a college education. You have to mm-hmm. have all this stuff behind you, and yet you got to work more mm-hmm. and get paid less or you know equal whatever it is. And that's bullshit because you know when we when you work and you have a career, you know um, you should get paid. I mean, even if you work at McDonald's or you know anything, you work over your hours. Mm -hmm. you get you know uh overtime or whatever the case or you get paid for those hours now it's just expected of you and it's like you got to sit there and keep your mouth shut like your whole vacation was just told you were just told when you could take your vacation yeah which sucks when initially you were told that you had to you were told by hr Mm -hmm. you had to take your vacation now Mm -hmm. and then you had the other um then you had your boss say no you're not taking the vacation now right because it doesn't work for me because you lived you live to serve me it's basically like oh i don't go away (laughs) till this time so why would you like i already know he doesn't like it if i'm gone while he's still there because he's like a baby and he's like he needs somebody to like give him a bottle and whatever, make copies for hold him. Hold your hand, hold his hand, right? Uh, but really, it's just insane because there's nothing going on this week. Really, it's like it, it's nothing like that. I have to prepare or make. It's just like he has to do his day to day. Like he has to write his own emails. Big deal. So yeah, well, you know, again, some people that are, you know, they they don't. Nobody wants to do things for themselves anymore, especially when there's somebody that can do it for you, right? Bill Cole, you're so right. He's what did he say? <laughs> he you, said your boss sounds like a douche canoe, and the human resource department of any job is utterly useless. Yeah, you can't see more because, um, yeah, it it it, it stops. But yeah, mm-hmm. Michelle, we, she tried to call in sick, and I guess you're just tuning in, oh. and um, she did call in sick one of the the days, and uh, she caught crap for it. Um, and, and she took one day off the entire year. So that's what we were talking about. And like, I'm, when he's away, when he travels, like I, there are days when I don't come in and I take those days, but like, yeah, one day off while he was in the office, but I'm going to call in, I'm going to take your advice and call in sick more. I think I'm going to have a lot of vaginal problems in 2019. (laughs) I foresee on the horizon, a lot of lady problems that, that he won't want to ask questions about. Uh, Yeah. I woke up and I I don't know. I was bleeding, itching, burning (laughs) all so many colors down there. I mean, I would show you, but no, Oh no, you don't want to see it. Yeah. Oh wait, no, let me show you a picture. So you know that I'm not, just home you know yeah. lying about it yeah oh my god well and <laughs> good time to do a station identification you are listening to real talk with karen stacy live on miami mike radio.com and we are listening to chrissy Mayer, who is going to have a lot of vaginal problems in 2019 they're coming up <laughs> they're coming up i have a that- dumb question karen uh-huh. is this radio is miami like is it in Miami? So Miami thing? Mike lives in Florida and this is a worldwide radio station. So there are people in like Italy listening to Ooh, us. Oh, buongiorno. Yes. There are people um, all over that are listening and, um, you know, it's all over the world. So yes, he is stationed in Florida. So the actual company is a Florida based company. But a lot of us are all over and we do, um, you know, we're here in Westchester. There are a few of us that are in Westchester and the guys are originally from Westchester. Miami Mike is actually from the Bronx. So they come up and we do a lot of events, which is like, you know, over the weekend, every, you know, sometimes on the weekends we have events that we do. So this mic looks so big. It looks like it's really, it's mine. It's only, it's it's really only this. (laughs) It's a fat. Yeah. Well, they, they, they call it like a, uh, what's it? Oh, it's very professional. Yes. No, but it's very like everybody, yeah, phallic. Yes. That's it. So everybody Mm -hmm. likes my mic and they want to touch it. And yeah, suddenly miss my boyfriend. My mic. You see, you see, well, this is my boyfriend, so you can't have that. <laughs> you have your own. <laughs> Tracy, Tracy Katz says she used to call him with diarrhea at one of her old jobs, and her boss always paid her when she said that. See, I will, I too, I see a lot of diarrhea coming up oh my. next year for me. I think I'm going to have a lot of weird Mexican food. I'm going to have a lot of bad sushi next year. Yeah, making some weird resolutions, but yeah. Uh, I don't even know. Like, I'm I'm not touching that one. But <laughs> this sounds like a shitty conversation. I'm, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> it's going to be so shitty. All right. So now, 
You've you just mentioned that you had a lot of jobs in the past. Mm. Now all of them were in, uh, being an executive uh, assistant, more or less. Yeah, um, always. And were all your bosses just shitty, and you couldn't. Uh... I've had like the, they've been all been varying degrees of shitty, like shitty in different ways, and like I've had so many jobs that I know in my experience, like for me, it it sucked way more having a female boss than a male boss. I think for precisely that reason of I can say my vagina is acting crazy today <laughs> and like a female boss will be like, really though? And then a, and then like a male boss will be like, oh God, like get out of here. Um, well, also women are, are not as easy. I mean, as a, being a woman, I think we interact better with men on a day-to-day basis. You know, yeah. like the opposite sex does better. It's like simpler almost. Yes, it is yeah. because it, it does better. When you have two women who's you know hormones are going crazy maybe they really are having vaginal issues you know (laughs) and and so you know maybe they had a fight with their boyfriend or husband or they didn't sleep because they were up with their kids all night yeah whatever the case women are definitely much more there's more to them i think maybe you can perceive more like you can uh you can sense more going on. I well, don't know. I think women just in general are more difficult to deal with. Why do you think men don't want to deal with us? <laughs> you know, women are not easy to deal with. We we have, you know, all of our issues, so to speak. So, you know, mm. it, it's it's not easy. Yeah. But so now you've, so you said you had a few jobs. So it was doing the same thing that you oh, were yeah. doing. Um, first job ever. I was a lifeguard and then I was a diving coach because I was a springboard diver for like 10 years. Oh, I wow, started when cool. I was like 11. I did it all through college. I loved it. Like even now I still watch like diving videos on Instagram because it just like takes me back I to that swim. time. Oh, I can't swim at I'll all. I'll teach you. Okay. I, I can't swim. I, I tried in, in a... I was in camp and I did the one, two, three turn, oh, freestyle. Like, breathe, and I went right down. And oh. I was like, okay, I'm done. I'll only swim like under the water, and I won't do that now because chlorine and, and my hair don't get along, yeah. so I won't do it. Now you're on land. I doggy paddle, and I just look cute and drink by the water, but oh, I don't physically good. swim or di- dive. I'd have a freaking heart attack. Oh, <laughs> well, I could teach you if you're That's ever interested. That's pretty cool. Thank um, you. And then, yeah, just uh, my very first job out of college, I worked – for Radio City Music Hall. I was How a cool. tour guide. It sounds cool until you're there and then you have to wear a three-piece polyester suit, like a little vest, pants up to here, vest up to here, a little jacket. And like at the time I had adult braces and very short, super like, you know, Midwestern mom do. It was like very blonde, very short, braces, polyester suit. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I had to memorize like a thing this thick of like facts about Radio City. And you they teach you how to dodge certain um, questions. questions. <laughs> yeah, like people would, for example, like, oh, do the Rockettes have a weight requirement? Of course they do. But like you have to spin it like, oh, they just have to be proportionate. Did you know? Oh, like look over here. Look at this yeah. bathroom painted Wait, by Georgia. Wait, I think I just saw a bird. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I'm having a stroke, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Fire! <laughs> so that was fun. And then, I God, I worked for, like, two advertising agencies. Uh, like, one was for, like, Broadway plays. I worked at a hedge fund uh, in, like, 2008, around, the, like, right around the time of, like, the financial collapse. Was it your um, fault? It was all my fault. <laughs> was I was like, oh, I pushed I the wrong it. button. I worked for NYU for, like, about a year for, like, a bunch of different bosses, a um, bunch of different departments. That was a really, like, I was really trying to get a full-time job there, but that is a place who, like, they, they don't want to, give up benefits so they'll keep yeah. temping 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 people and then moving you along so you don't uh become full-time moving right along moving right along and then uh god what else i worked at a private school on the upper east side doing admissions oh. i was like the admissions assistant so that was kind of fun there was a couple of sort of famousy kids who came in um one was like um Giselle and um, not her, but the other lady. So Giselle and some other lady had kids with what's his name? The, the Patriot, Giselle? the Patriot, the model Giselle. Oh, I don't know the Patriot. Who the hell is like the famous um, football player? God damn it! What's his name? He's hot. Yeah, I you got, guys should I know. got nothing. I... Bridget Moynihan and this guy also had a baby. So like yeah. that kid, they came in to interview. Um, 
Yeah, like, you know, um, the the director from, like, Marie Claire came in to interview with her kid. and um, Oh, so all, like, the higher-uppers. Yeah, the higher-uppers. And, like, before I got there, um, like, Baron Trump had actually interviewed to be at this school. And he was, like, too dumb. And they, like... Too dumb. I remember, like, looking over the admissions file and, like, the things they wrote. And I was like, oh, my God, this is the tea. And, like, that was years ago before... Tom Brady! Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah, I, you got me. I'm, I don't know. I'm so bad my son mm. loves football everybody and their mother has tried to teach me i just don't get it so um yeah i'm sorry i was useless in that usually i have some clue but not on this one it's okay thank you I ball sports it. are like i don't know kind of boring to me too sometimes yeah I, I and so do you think that you had all of these different jobs because you just didn't find your your niche so i to speak? think like, i are you just doing it so you could pay the bills and i think you so can do what you really want i think so part of it because i knew like um, probably like, gosh, I mean like probably 2006, seven, I knew I'm, I'm doing comedy. Like this is, I want this to be like my life somehow, okay. but I always had this fear in the back of my mind. Like, Oh, well your parents paid for a bachelor's degree. You better like just work in an office all the time and have benefits and like, don't waste your parents money by just being a comedian. So that was like always nagging me and then I did kind of you put the guilt and the fear in there and then you know both my parents were like oh you're not really gonna do this full time are you this is just a hobby like I'd go to improv classes and then I'd come back and my mom would be like how was clown school and I'd be like haha no but and then it would like secretly really hurt my feelings so it's yeah. you know what it, that's what anybody that's in like the arts and the theater and stuff a lot of times it is it's like well what's you know what's your real what's your real job you know mm -hmm. um because sadly, it's very difficult to make money and pay your bills with something that makes your heart pound, mm -hmm. right? So, so many people, that's why all the people on Wall Street that are partners and traders and all of that, they got all this money, but they're on Xanax like a mm -hmm. hundred times a day because they're miserable. Um, you know, I'm, of course, not everybody, but I'm just saying, yeah. you know, that a lot of times that that is the case. God bless sneezing. you. Wow, that is the quietest <gasps> sneeze ever. That's my radio sneeze. That's your radio sneeze? Yeah. I couldn't radio sneeze if they paid me to. You did catch it at the right time. Wow. It goes I never. And plus, down. I really enjoy sneezing. I love the oh, way that feels really? when it comes out. Oh, my God. I, I hate it. sneezing. I feel like it's I such. I love a good sneeze. It's like. It feels whoo! like a pain in the ass. It feels like a oh, real derailment to me, my day. For me, I, it's like a nice release. I love to sneeze. I'm, I'm all over sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over. But it's got to be a good sneeze. But, a good sneeze. But yeah, I mean, I, I know like for myself, well, I was a dancer, um, growing Ooh. up and, uh, my parents had a dance school. My mom was a dancer and I was done with that by like a certain age. My body grew out of it and I just said, I can't do this unless I'm swinging around a pole. I'm never going to, you know, mm -hmm. make it anywhere. And plus being a dancer, um, you know, like a comedian, like, you know, an actor, an actress, it's very difficult unless you get the right show, it's very difficult to make money like that, mm -hmm. right? So, um, I, my, I was like in my 20s, I was young, and I had started working young, and I remember, you know, my boyfriend at the time said to me, which eventually became my husband, said to me <laughs> um, that... Uh, you know, what are you going to do? Because, like, you're, like, stuck there. Like, what are you going to do? What do you want to do? And I always loved doing hair and makeup. And it was, like, a big joke to my family. Like, oh, what are you going to go to Wilford Academy? Like, you know, like, who does that? Like, only a loser, you know, goes to mm -hmm. cosmetology school. So I thought about that, too, for a while. When I yeah. decided to do it, because, again, that's not a real job, mm -hmm. right? So when I decided to do it, I actually never told my, my family. I, I told my grandmother because my grandmother supported me with everything I ever did. Thank Aww. God I miss her every day. And um, I literally, my grandmother knew and she helped me with school. And I told my parents, I started Monday, I told my parents on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Because I did not want them to say something derogatory, mm -hmm. make me feel like crap and like I wasn't good enough or wasn't doing something good enough. And I didn't want them to stop me. And yeah. I wanted to go and I want, this is something that I wanted to do. And it was the same type of thing. Like, you know, like they, they're like, really, this is what you're going to do? Like, yeah. this is, you know, why, 
you you had you did all of these other things so you could go be a hairdresser and cut hair like which you is know. it's a dope career like it's i don't know it's it's fun well, the it's, way like, they money, made, like... made the, the you know the mentality is any idiot could be a hairdresser and you know no offense to hairdressers but a lot of idiots are hairdressers and i love you all but you know i mean there are certain you know but it's a talent so mm-hmm. you don't have to be intelligent to figure out how to make your hands work. And I'm not saying here, I'm just being, I'm joking around, but you all, you know, it's like the cracking gum and, mm-hmm. you know, but it is, but a lot of people say just like what your parents said and my parents kind of did the same thing to me. Like, that's not a, like, where's your real job? Like people yeah. will say that. And then sometimes if I say what's, what's your real job, people get like insulted by it, yeah. you know? Um, but it's all real. Right. Yeah. Um, and so now you, so then, so you've been in comedy now for about eight years. I mean, if I'm counting improv, uh, started improv in like, I mean, even did a semester of it like in college. Okay. I mean, if I'm starting from, uh, it's tw- 12 years of some kind of, some kind of comedy. And yeah. even when you were working in some of your jobs, you were still theatrical. They were theatrical ones. When yeah. you work with Radio City and all that stuff, you still had theatrics going on there. Mm-hmm. Well, so what is it like now? Because you're saying, you were just saying to me when you first got here, you know, you would leave work and go do a comedy club, you know, after mm-hmm. work or whatever. How, what is it like juggling? Like, I mean, literally it's two careers. I mean, yeah. you know. It's like, uh. You know, I'll keep extra, like, dresses and outfits, like, under my desk or, like, hanging in my boss's closet that he never used. Like, in an emergency, like, let's say I dress, like, really schlubby for work. It's, like, a day I don't have a show. Uh-huh. Like, this is in the middle because I didn't want to, like, phone it in for this important um, Karen Karen Stacy show. Aww. So, uh, but, like, some days I will just show up, like, in head-to-toe in Taylor Loft or, like, gross jeans because I'll just be like, whatever, I don't, I'm just taking the day off because usually I'm always like in a dress that's tight maybe some kind of Spanx tights heels like hair a lot of makeup like a lot more like jewelry and stuff like I I look like a like a grown woman at a quinceanera like that's my <laughs> sort of show look um so when I don't have a show like I kind of tone it down but I always keep like emergency costumes around okay. and um yeah a lot of times it's like I'm in an elevator on the subway like putting on makeup and like fixing my hair and like like, that woman (laughs) yeah yeah like like this is my yeah ripping that face off right yeah um so like I just have been used to it like I um you def it's a lot of compromises like I'm you know I'm not going on a lot of like I mean I've also been dating the same guy for four years I was about to say like I'm not going on dates anymore but like you know, it's, like, less time with my boyfriend, less time I'm, like, really not traveling very much. Like, yeah. my family lives all spread out now. Like, my brother's in North Carolina, my sister's in Vegas, my dad's in Florida. So it's, like, you know, maybe if I wasn't doing comedy, it'd be more time spent with them, more time traveling, more time, like, uh, maybe giving a shit about my job. <laughs> um, like, I give just enough shits. So, yeah, but yeah. but you're but you love what you're doing, so that makes it all right, doesn't it? I think so. I mean, I think I'm a pretty good employee. My therapist says I'm very good. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> never mind that. I'm talking about like the comedy side because that's the part that you're really sacrificing, right? Because yeah. you know, it, your day job is your day job, but you're saying that you could be doing other things after your day job yeah. and you're doing your comedy. But if that's what you want in your world, then doesn't that make sense? Yeah, like, and I think if I didn't, and I always think, oh, like if I didn't have to work this day job like I'd have so many good quality hours to my day back like I could be writing more I could be reading more I could be um like doing more radio shows I could be like you know working out more and yeah but you know know what you you're still knocking on all those doors so it who's to say that if your focus you know stays as it is that that won't come to fruition you know but unfortunately we all have to pay the bills right oh yeah Uh, you know, you got to figure out, you know, what to do to make that happen. The only other way is, you know, to make some significant sacrifices that you can cut out whatever is going on during the day if it's really not something you want. Yeah. And, you know, and then you go forward. I think for me right now, the biggest sacrifice I'm, I'm becoming more and more aware of is like, oh, shit. Like, and I look at all the people I went to school with, like, kind of leading what I would call, like, a normal life, right? But sometimes I go, like, I look at my Instagram and I go, oh, shit. Like, I could, I could be on my third kid right now if I really want you know if I had gone differently and like am I running out of time am I gonna seriously regret not having kids like that that's another like nagging 
voice. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, but you're 35, so you still have time. You're you've been dating somebody for four years. 29, that, right? And and you you know you've been dating somebody for four years, so he's not a stranger. Um, I had my son at 38. Um, wow. And I mean, you know, a lot of people have kids a little bit later. Yeah. Um, when you're trying to build a, a life, it happens. And I do find also, in in my opinion, when when people look. Like you said, you're looking on Instagram or whatever. Remember that whatever you're seeing on social media is what people want you of to course, see. Of course, and I so do the same thing. All like, of these, yeah. right? So all of these people that you think live, you know, with a white picket fence and have, you know, a boy, a girl, and you know, a dog, a cat, and a partridge in a pear tree. Mm-hmm. Maybe not so much, you know. I mean, uh, listen, as a hairdresser, I've heard all of the stories. And as a woman, I, I know all the men that are trying to, you know, mm-hmm. bang me and not their wife. So, you know, you watch uh, things on social media and it all looks hunky dory. And in life, it's not. So you can never be. Of course. You know, the grass is not always greener. I always say that, that, you know, people look at things never, and I'm not saying that you were envious, but, you know, never look to someone else, engage your life by looking at them and saying, wow, I could have geared my life differently. If you want to say you want to gear your life differently, that's different. That's on mm. you. But don't do it because you're looking on social media because, you know what, people are posting on social media. You have no idea what the hell they really are. Yeah. You don't know what they're, unless you talk to them. You know how many times I have, I see women posting stuff on social media. They show a thing of flowers. Look what my husband brought me. Yeah. And meanwhile, I know that they were fighting the day before because he didn't come home for a night. Right. You know? uh. So you want to post on social media that you got flowers? Well, how about, you know, saying why you got the flowers? <laughs> yeah. You know? Because now I got these flowers and a new STD. <laughs> Excitement! Happy New Happy Year! Happy birthday! See, you're not going to be the only person with vaginal issues in yep. 2019. <laughs> Sick days for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Sick days for everybody. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in to Real Talk with Karen Stacy live on MiamiMikeRadio.com. We are also live on Facebook on my group page, Real Talk with Karen Stacy, and we are talking to my guest Chrissy. Mayor, um, and she is telling us how it is to juggle two careers, basically being um, an, an executive assistant and uh, a comedian. Mm-hmm. So um, let's. So now you were talking a little bit. So home life. Um, you just said you had people all your your family all over. So you mentioned yeah. uh, your father, mm-hmm. your brother, and your sister. You yeah, didn't mention your mother. Well, she's dead. Um, oh, my. <laughs> um, yeah, she just passed away in August. I'm uh, sorry. It's okay. Um, it's weird. Like, for anybody who's lost somebody know, like knows, especially, like, a parent or, like, you know, God forbid, like, a child, that's probably the only thing I could imagine that would be worse. Um, it's, like, it comes at you in waves, right? Like she, bad too. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Um, you know, she had brain cancer for almost three years and, like, was good, was fighting it, like, in and out of treatments. And then, like, boom, it came back in February. And she was still okay until april and then we started to notice like oh because like the tumor was on like the focal motor skill part of her brain so her speech and her balance was what was like starting to go which is was sucked so bad because she's such a super was super chatty lady make friends with everybody very charming very sweet like adorable woman and so like oh the, those things were like her strengths and to see like even simple sentences towards the end like we just had no idea what she was saying and i can't imagine how frustrating that must have been for her like so in a way it's like i was happy she passed because now she's not like struggling in her own body anymore Relieved. and then yeah, and it was a hard summer. Like, I went and visited them in uh, Florida. Like, I was there a week in April, a long weekend in June, a long weekend in so July. So, I assume your parents lived in Florida. Yeah, that's what yeah. They, they and moved... were they together? Yeah, okay. yeah. They moved there, like, full-time last October, like, while all this cancer stuff was still going on. But I And I was like, well, you want to go die in Florida? How original, um, is my joke. But, uh, like, how I really feel which is pissed because... They moved far away. They made it harder for me and my sister. And we were both still in Long Island. Like, at the time, while I was in New York, I was, uh, like, in White Plains. But I've always lived around. Like, I lived in Brooklyn. I lived in Astoria for four years. So um, that was really annoying. When, <laughs> like, But I knew it's what they wanted to do. They wanted to, like, have their retirement time. So I visited as much as I could and got into so many fights with my dad because he was, like, 
super fucking stubborn, wouldn't hire more nurses. And like, as anybody who's like dealt with somebody who's had, who's had cancer, it's like, you need a lot of help and you need, you know, somebody to help with all the kinds of stuff. And he just thought he could do it all. And then he ended up like really like fucking up his back, like pulling his back out. Like two days after I told him you need to hire a full-time nurse. And I was like, Oh, you're fucking stubborn German. You're never going to listen to me. Like a, a woman be your daughter. So like, I, I definitely, you know, that's why I'm in therapy twice a week. You know, I have, like, a lot of anger well, stuff. What does that mean? Oh, just a small bit. <laughs> just um, a little bit. I mean, plus all the other life stuff, too. Right. Um, yeah, so I still am, like, angry at my dad. And it's, like, plus there's, like, all the, you know, like, childhood stuff that I'm now, like, you know, when you go into therapy, you realize, like, you are the way you are because of what was set up while you were a kid. Right. And your patterns are, right. like... It's what it's yeah. how, how you learn to deal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's like I'm packing all that stuff, and uh, and it's hard because now like everybody is scattered, and especially now it's like the holidays. It's like every first thing without mom was like, oh, it was like my birthday was in November. It was like, oh, first birthday without her, first yeah. dad's birthday, Thanksgiving, and now it's gonna be like first Christmas, and it's like, yeah. And sometimes it just really hits you. Like yeah. like my boyfriend knows, I'll just start like sobbing in the middle of the night randomly, and like. You know, but it's good. It's good to like let it out. Yes. Because but it yeah. sucks. Um, and, and it's not easy to do. And you're fortunate that you have his support um, and that he understands that. Not everybody understands that. And I, I, I say that a lot on this show. You know, it's, you never know what someone else is going through. Um, and so many of us, you know, are dealing with real life issues and have parents that are not well or parents that we've lost you know, people that we've lost and the holidays are very difficult, you know, in mm. my house in particular, I mean, there are two seats at the table that aren't being filled now, you know, and, mm. uh, you know, I, you know, just what you were just talking about with your mom, I, I can resonate with that because my mother was a dancer and, um, she was a force to be reckoned with. Um, if anybody thinks that, you know, I keep it real, my mother was a diva Mm -hmm. and I probably learned, I mean, I know I learned a lot from her. Um, and my, she had no filter. At least I work Mm -hmm. on having a filter, but now my mom can no longer speak. Um, you know, my mother has dementia and, uh, she's only 74 years old and she cannot speak. Um, you know, she was a dancer her whole life and, uh, you know, and nothing mattered to her but dancing. And wow. now she barely walks. She broke her foot. She broke Aww. her hip. And even though she still keeps going, um, she just shakes her head and looks at us like, why am I, why? Oh, that's so and hard. You're, you're watching this person in a shell. Um, and, yeah. and like you said, when you said, and I don't know that the word happy was, you know, probably the right word, but you know, yeah, you relief. said you were happy yeah. when she died. You know, it, it is a relief when you watch somebody suffer um, and you don't recognize them. And, and I, again, it sounds disgusting to say, but you know, if when if it happens quickly, it, to me, it's so much better yeah. on them, on the family, because it, it, illnesses will tear families apart. Not that death doesn't, right? Um, because people do really stupid things when people die. You know, they get greedy. Yeah. They want you know will money and all oh. this stuff. Like you know, who cares? But um, you know, it's it, that's real life, and and that's something you have to deal with. And you are, I mean, do you live alone? I live with my boyfriend. Yeah, we we moved in like a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're not alone. So you have him. So that's you know. And I have Jesus. There you go. <laughs> no, okay. Well, hey, I'm not really. I just was saying that because they're always on the street like and oh yeah like, it's like salvation army time yes. and then, like they're always handing out pamphlets and i'm like all right you know what fine i will read this okay yeah. well and you can have jesus <laughs> you can you can hang with jesus <laughs> while you have your vaginal issues in 2019 yeah <laughs> well you know hey what are you gonna do but now now we have to talk about um this is like the the knit and gritty here because you and i were talking on the phone yesterday and I have to go into my 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 post so that I don't screw up what I wrote because I don't remember things anymore. Mm, me too. I my f- brain I plays forget. tricks on me. But um. But I remember like choreography to like old dances from high school. Sure. Right. Well, and that's <laughs> the way the mind works. I mean, yeah. that's why people with dementia and Alzheimer's and stuff, when somebody plays a certain song, they remember and recognize that right away. So mm. you know, that happens. Um. Okay. So. 
we're going to talk a little bit about your boyfriend. Okay. Um, I posted something today that said, nothing is more attractive than a man who is fully committed to his woman. No matter how many females are drawn to him, his eyes, his ears, and his hands remain on his woman. So, like, that's a, can I get an amen Mm -hmm. after that, right? So, what I added to that was, I was blessed to have... To have lived this, ladies and gentlemen, there is no better feeling than knowing your man is all yours. Not because you give him no choice, but because he chooses to only be yours. Um, And I said we would be touching on this, um, you know, tonight. So, you know, I think that that's a huge thing. We live in a world right now where everyone is just swiping right. A lot of swiping, yeah. You know, and and that's what it seems to all be about, is everybody is just swiping, 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 and no one lives in the here and the now anymore. Mm -hmm. And no one's building anybody up. No one is supporting anybody. No one wants to commit. So... Where the hell did you find this guy? <laughs> I don't know. It is. It's so true. Like now, like the, the like now. It's like because we got together before Tinder, or maybe right as Tinder was becoming a thing. But um, you said four years. Four years. Yeah. No, Tinder was there. Was and, a thing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, um, yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe around that time. I don't know. Maybe we have maybe a fact somebody checker. can somebody can fact check for us. Fact Bill check. Cole is usually good with that. Bill Cole. We need a fact check of uh, when did Tinder begin, just so that we can. You know, and I think especially with like being in New York or anybody who like you know lives in like the city at all knows like you're always just like oh well what's better what's better and like I feel like as a woman you feel when you're dating that like. Like, I don't know, I think before I met Frank, I was kind of still pretty focused on comedy, but I think I always had this feeling like, how can I compete when I am in this city of, like, models and, like, gorgeous knockout tens that are, like, 100 pounds and, like... Do you know what I mean? No, or you're also, I don't know, you know what you mean. And now we got to go back to the first thing we were talking about, which is t- sticking up for yourself. I mean, hello, 2012. Yeah. Uh, I I just got my cousin said 2012. Thank you, 2012. Yeah. So that was that was uh, six years ago. Okay. Almost seven. All right. Thank you for the fact check. Thank you, Tammy. Yes. Um. But no, I I you see. It's interesting that you say that, and I'm sure there are a lot of our listeners out there that are listening to that, um, is that I don't ever feel that you're in competition with anyone. Mm -hmm. You're only in competition with yourself, if you really think about it. You're in competition with the person you were yesterday. Yes. Okay? That's true. So, you, models, this, that, and the other, there is only one you in this world. And I was a foot model. I mean, I was a oh model. Oh my god, I have I have people that are going to go cuckoo now <laughs> because I have foot I have you people have foot that have people? foot fetishes. Yes, there are people foot on the feed. People. So there's going to be some some stuff coming through. I now. have a um profile on celebrityfeet.com which I didn't know existed until a couple months ago. Oh. So there's pictures of my feet that people found over the years just from, like, Instagram. Oh, my God. Like, I used to spend a lot of time, like, I'd paint, like, you know, an American flag on my toe or something. Like, I'd spend a lot of time on a manicure before I discovered gel. Um, And, like, I would just post, like, oh, look at my manicure. But then, yeah, people on foot sites take it. Anyway, to answer your question, where did I find Frank? I met him. Uh, he books and produces comedy. And at the time I was like dating my ex, who's a stand-up comedian. And I like, you know, I saw him at a couple shows. I would like see him here and there, but we never actually had like, you know, actual face this close from each other time until okay. like, um, a mutual friend of ours had like a birthday roast at a bar and he was there. And I just remember I was like oh, really drawn in. I'm like, he's just is so nice and so cute. And like, and then I just started freaking out cause my uh, ex at the time was like, was like coming oh the you. foot people like he no my my current boyfriend was like gonna come meet me at this bar where the roast was and i started oh. to freak out because he was super controlling and i was like oh he's gonna know i'm attracted to frank and if he, he it's gonna be a fight he's gonna you know so then i had to like i distanced myself a little bit i was like oh, all right see you later see you later and then like me and him broke up that summer and then like Frank, uh, that November came to my show at the Stonewall Inn that I do every month, and like, 
like same thing I, I, I thought he was super hot again but I was like oh like go sit with my sister in the front like I, I just was like not even in that mindset I was just in like show producing mode right and then after the show like me and my sister and Frank all went out for a drink and I was like oh he's really cute and then I started like I was surprisingly like not a hoe with him like I had been <laughs> with almost every other guy like bang immediately like right away on the first date second date like not a de- not a big deal and like I remember he like made me wait which was like looking back <laughs> very you wait. looking back very sweet at the time I was like losing my mind I'm like let's go um yeah we he like we we did it for the first time like in a nice hotel like he was just a real gentleman through and through and Damn uh, him. <laughs> yeah you're like he was just like a real gentleman he's just like a real what the hell man a real nice guy and then yeah and now it's been like four years and we've been like living together like a year and a half and it's been really good and he's so supportive of me like crazy out of this world supportive of like believes in my dreams like sometimes more than i do at times and just like that's been the more so the thing he's brought to the table like far and away more so than any other person in my life well and and that's a huge thing i mean i i did not have um a ton of support um you know and and my husband no matter what it was i mean i could tell him i was gonna do whatever and he would be like okay you know and he would support me he would go you sure that's what you want to do and i would go yeah and he'd go all right Mm -hmm. what do we got to do and, you know, that's why I was saying in my post, what, what's what I was saying in my post is that, you know, empowering another human being and supporting them and supporting their dream um, is there is nothing better in the world because a lot of people are intimidated. Like, you know, as a man, you just said the other guy that you were with was very controlling. Ugh, so yeah, you garbage. probably could have never done what you're doing now because he oh, yeah. would not have allowed you to yeah. perhaps surpass him it was nuts and he would say all the time like because he was also a comedian and like he would say oh i know you're gonna blow past me like but it was like little it was little things like i don't know if anybody Passive, aggressive any, like, any, i don't know if anybody listening is like dated somebody like this or even you like like he'd be you know we'd go to like you know make out or something and then i'd be like oh can you just like take off some of your makeup because I'd wear like you know liquid liner not today but like most of the time I will can you just take off some of that makeup and then I just started getting like oh god he doesn't like he was making you insecure so like over time I wear less and less makeup and then he'd be like oh I really like it when you wear your hair back so over time I'm always wearing my hair back and normally it's like big and red and curly and it's like very out there I should have had it well it's very dirty today which is why it's up it's Um, all good so, like, over time, I'm just sort of, like, dimming myself down. Well, to like there you go, because he was trying to put yeah. out your light. Yeah. I mean, it was funny, because I am the exact opposite way. Well, I used to be, at least. And I would say, um, like, I would say to my husband, like, I'd put, let's say, two dresses on. I'm like, which one do you like better? He's like, well, tell me which one you want to wear, so I'll tell you I like the other one, because I know uh, you're going to wear the one that you, that, like. uh, that, uh, that, that you like, not the one that I like. That's so funny. why are you asking me which one I Aww. like? So, you know, and I would do that. Like, if he, you know, the, the one time <laughs> I listened funny. was I had asked him, because my hair has been every color, you know, on the on the spectrum, and I said, um, when we get married, you know, what color hair do you want me to have? Aww. And so he's like, I'd like you to have, you know, your natural brown, you know, brunette. I, you know, I like your hair dark. And that was one of the first times I think I ever listened to him. <laughs> it looks great. Well, thank you. But no, it was much darker than this. Um, and I, but I listened to him and like, he was like, I can deal with the highlights, but I went completely blonde. Like our, our anniversary, I mean, uh, engagement picture. I am Mm -hmm. blonde, blonde, blonde. And he didn't felt he doesn't like blonde. So, you know, but I like, if he told me, Mm -hmm. I want you to be a brunette. Normally I would have gone platinum because (laughs) that's just what I do, you know? And that's, that's exactly my point. So with, with your, your ex, you know, he was not encouraging you and he was not empowering you 
to go out there and be the best comedian that you could be, he was trying to make you feel insecure. So was that yeah. so you so that so he could be better than you or like he didn't realize it. He would say you're so funny, you're funnier than me, but like at the same time, you would do he would do this shit that would make what me do you feel mean like that he didn't realize it. Maybe you didn't realize, or maybe it I didn't time. realize it. Like he would say that he he at the time I'm sure he would say that he's supportive, but then it's like you know he behaves in this way, like basically asks me to like be less of myself and any right. time I would even like chat with another like male comedian oh he's trying to fuck you like everybody's trying to fuck you and it's like well guess what now I can't now that cuts the people I'm allowed to talk to like in half and, and a lot of comedy, boy I have nobody to talk to <laughs> <laughs> a lot of comedy is like networking and building relationships and that's how you get booked on certain shows so it was right. I felt like pretty trapped and uh yeah there was just it was so toxic was well so he was bad. very insecure obviously yeah and now you have frank who is extremely i guess he's a secure man i think so yeah he's pretty secure well i mean the fact that he reached out to me yeah to get you on the show and i did not know who it was and then when we talked the other day i said i think some i don't know who it was but somebody reached out and put us together and you were like yeah, and I don't know what you said. You said something like, yeah, he's like, yeah, I, oh, I'm not sure who it was. Oh, maybe, yeah, well, maybe it was Frank. I'm like, well, who's Frank? Oh, well, like, I don't, he's kind of my boyfriend, like you said. Like, oh, I think that maybe we, our connection was weird because I was, like, at work, like, in between. Oh, you know, okay, like, okay. Because I was like, wait a minute, you didn't know who, you know, who it was? Because I was trying to figure out if it was me who reached out or him. No, like, it was him. Definitely he's my boyfriend. That is not, uh, you know. That's, I'm sure of that. So yes. I think I was trying well, to figure out. Well, and you guys live together, too. <laughs> That's why I was like, wait a minute. Am I yeah. misinterpreting things here? But yeah, you're right. No, yeah. it was, no he's could, good. Could have been the, the connection or, you know, whatever. But now, so he's from Westchester, right? Yeah. And you said he knows a lot of people. He does, yeah. Like, all, all his friends are still, like, kind of in the Westchester area, which is nice. Like, I, I love his friends. And, like, I feel like I've sort of, like, been, like, an amoeba. Like, I've sort of, like... And I'm in their little group now, and it's they're nice. And, like, I don't know where the hell my – I have a lot of comedian friends that are, like, kind of all over, and then a lot of them are still on Long Island. So it's like you have people who kind of stay where they are, and right. then everybody kind of scatters. Right. So, well, of course. That, yeah. You know, that makes sense. Now, where – um. Wh- where – like, so you said – so you perform, you said, all over the place. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like Manhattan. Yeah, clubs in the city. Do you do anything in Westchester? I don't know that I've seen anything. Yeah, mostly I'm at Lucy's in Pleasantville, which is... Oh, I never heard of that. Where is Also that? the comedy club that Frank um, is the head honcho over there. He books oh, that club. okay. And so there's... Gotta check that out There's then. like a... There's a room, you know, there's Lucy's Lounge and, and there's Lucy's Laugh Lounge, which is the back room that like Frank books I and they have I've shows there. I now that you say that on, yeah. on like uh, Instagram or something. Yeah. Yeah. it's awesome like they had they just had Bobby Kelly there and um, like they've been getting more and more like big names and it's the shows like almost always sell out and it's really it's great if you want like New York City quality comics but you don't want to like schlep to Manhattan so, right yeah. okay and is that like a, a dinner they have place? food there and, yeah okay yeah they have like a full menu and like tons of drinks so i mean that's what i focus on is yeah, the drinks that's that's all and you want everybody to focus so. on drinks right because the, the more they drink the funnier you exactly. want exactly right? <laughs> exactly um so now how often are you there are you there often at or? lucy's like i mean i'm there like sometimes just when frank is but performing there like i don't know maybe like once a month you okay. know, like, because there's sometimes, like, a friend will do a produced show there, and I'll be on that lineup, and then, you know, like, I headlined there a few months ago, and so it's, like, it's not all the time. It's not like, oh, you're the guy's girlfriend, you're there all the time. Like, right. I'm there, you know, probably as often as any of the other comics that are there a lot, gotcha. but I'm, it's not, like, the Chrissy Mayer show every night. Right. That would be crazy now where else do you perform i really like in the city i like west side comedy club um i like new york comedy club i have a show every month that i um host and produce and book uh called comedy at stonewall which is at the stonewall inn on christopher street okay and that i've been doing for like five years that's an awesome show and um i do a show with my friend samantha called broads and babes where it's like and that kind of is like a traveling show like we'll go kind of anywhere and do it and we have games and we have a lot of crowd interaction with the audience and uh 
you know, like it's, we have this big wheel that you basically have to spin and like on it will be all these random things. It's like the wheel of destiny. It's like shots or dance break or you win a prize or like you have to play a game and then they have to like pick people. It's so fun. And, uh, we're just sort of like getting our website together for that. That's uh, awesome. Like we have an Instagram, but, um, you know, that's like a fun sort of like traveling show we're, we're working on. Like, oh, actually the next one is at Westside Comedy Club, uh, January 24th. So that is for sure. And don't you have a show uh, like tomorrow or something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, Friday, Friday I'm headlining the Fairfield Comedy Club in Fairfield, Connecticut, where I, I went to college out there. So um, I have some college friends coming, which is very exciting. But yes, please, if you live in Connecticut, please come to this show. And if you buy a ticket, use my code, which is just C-H-R-A-S-S-I-E. And uh, then I get credit for you coming. And then it's also like a cheaper ticket. So well, when we when we finish the show, um, and I will reshare my Facebook Live. You can share it and then put a com like okay. when you share it, put if you want to come to this show, okay. use this code, perfect, so people can take advantage of um, the discount. Take advantage, people! Um, wow, so that's cool. Yeah. I mean, Fairfield, Connecticut, is kind of far from Westchester, right? How far is that? An hour? Or um, yeah, an hour? yeah. Maybe a little less. Oh, less? Okay. I don't know. I always get confused. Fairfield. Oh, I'm thinking of Hartfield, right? That's further? Hartford. Hartford? No. Yeah. Yeah, uh, right? Hartford? Because Fairfield is pretty close to Stamford. Oh, okay. Then I'm yeah. completely off. Stamford is so close to here. And Stamford yeah. is a lot of fun, too. You could go to Stamford oh, yeah. for, like, dinner or something and then go. What time is the show? Uh, nine o'clock. Oh yeah, so you could do dinner. There's that prime out there. Yeah. Uh, crab shell, which is right there, right? Yeah. And then what is that? The next town over? Yeah, it's pretty close. It's like I think it's exit twenty two. You don't have to take the boat though to get there, right? I don't There's think that so. Boat to go, I don't um, think it. You could take a boat. But. I don't know. I saw like a boat thing, but that was the summertime. I don't. I don't mm. know. Somebody said if you go across the water, you could. Thirty see. minutes, says Raymond. Oh, good. Thirty Someone's minutes. Listening. See, there you go. Yes, he's listening. He's, Thanks, he's Raymond. A Connecticut boy. <laughs> Raymond, you better come on Friday. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, that's true. Um, okay, so now you also so you do have your own website, correct? Yes, it's um, chrissymayer dot com. C h r i s s i e m a y r dot com. See, it's very small because mine is KarenStacy.com. So this way people can't forget, right? Yeah. They know who you are. And it's usually easier to find because nobody else has your name, maybe. Right. <laughs> and a lot of times people spell, like, one or both of my names wrong, which is right. fine. If you just put in whatever, like, Chrissy Mayer comedy, like, you'll get to the right place right. eventually. Right. I know. People spell my name S-T-A-C-E-Y instead of C-Y. Mm-hmm. And it happens, too. So, you know, it is what yeah. it is, right? Right. It's not... Uh, Anything. So now, did we, so you, you, we, did we talk about all your shows that are coming up? Um, yeah, like Broads and Babes, January 24th at Westside Comedy Club. This Friday, I'm headlining Fairfield Comedy Club. I mentioned that. I mean, I list everything on my website. Uh, those are just like the two big ones right now. And like the next comedy at Stonewall is January 5th. Um, that's a super, that's, it's a, you know, I don't know if you know anything about the Stonewall Inn, but it's a famous LGBT landmark. It's where the Stonewall oh, riots. Oh, no, I didn't know that. It's where the Stonewall riots happened in 1969. It was like basically kind of like the start of the gay rights movement. And so now it's a not only a New York City, but it's a national landmark. So they can't change anything about it. And it's a very pretty cool. cool space. And uh, so I always book like an LGBT lineup for that show. So it's like I have that show. I have my all girls show with broads and babes. And so I kind of like just mix it up. Oh, yeah, that sounds fun. Well, and, and so you're doing one of the, because you said you're doing a lot of stuff after work, after you, you know, you mm-hmm. change out of your uh, your corporate world yeah. and go into your, uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> your Batgirl mm-hmm. um, thing. And again, I just would like to play it. Uh, I have to get that to shirt. shirt. Yeah. B is for bitch. You know what I'm going to do is I'm, when I start calling out sick more, I'm going to get that shirt, except it's going to say I is for itch, and then it's going to have an arrow <laughs> pointing down to my veg. veg. Yes, yeah. there you go. And that way, and, and just, just to like- recap in case anybody missed the beginning of the show, uh, Chrissy's boss is a little bit of a... a, a douche. Yeah. yeah, douche. That's a perfect word. Yeah. And um, and uh, so she had called out sick one day and, and he had an issue with that. Mm-hmm. So she was saying that for 2019, she was going to have a lot of vaginal issues. Yeah. Um, so she'd be calling out and oh, obviously itching. without him, you know, wanting to know more details on why she wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of uh, weird bleeding. Yeah. 
yeah, I want to throw up myself and I don't, ha- and, and that's not even like a realistic <laughs> thing and I'm ready to throw up. Um, well, now what do you do for the holidays? I'm going to stay here. Uh, I'm going to go to my boyfriend's family's place in Westchester. Okay. And that's going to be awesome. Like I really am into like buying gifts and like even more so wrapping oh, gifts. Oh, that's right. You said you love wrapping Obsessed. gifts. Obsessed. Like oh I've watched God. I've watched people like at, at malls and at Papyrus like how they wrap and I've learned tricks and tactics and I really like buying wrapping paper like especially when it's on sale. Like I wait like December 26th people are like cooling down. No, that's when I fire up because because that's when all the wrapping paper is on sale for $1. Oh At Papyrus, those rolls of wrapping paper are like $9 plus, but not on December 26th. It's all going to go on sale. So meet me there at Papyrus. It's, it's going to be go time. And it's thick, quality, like very glittery, sparkly, shiny wrapping paper. It's like the quality shit, you know? If if you ever saw how I wrap presents, you'd probably kill yourself. Because <laughs> I am the worst wrapper in the world. Um, so I don't even wrap anymore. I take um, the tissue paper. Oh, and like the gift bags? And the gift That's bags. That's fine. Because I do such a horrible job. I try. And I mean, I'm better now. Like it looks a little flatter when I do it, but I really don't do a good job. So the trick is, even for a tissue paper and a gift bag, so you have your gift bag, right? Um, so like, let's say, so like, okay, imagine you're holding a piece of tissue paper. The trick for like doing perfect tissue paper is you grab it by the middle, like the middle of the piece, and then you quickly pull down, like you just go, like it goes through the air. That way it perfectly spikes up. Okay. And you put your one folded bit, just like you stick it into the bag and you do that like maybe three, four times. That way you have like perfectly spiked up tissue paper. Yeah. You lost me already. (laughs) I should br- I should have brought some to do like yeah a, we we get in a tutorial I'll send on you a video. how how to wrap you just be like you how know. to wrap uh, gifts one oh one yeah I am the I'm worst. gonna do that I think I'm gonna do a video about what about wrapping. New Year's Eve what are you doing New Year's Eve I'm working on doing a comedy show I'm kind of working with this bar it may or may not happen. Well, but I'll be here they need yeah. to freaking do that soon oh yeah it's coming up. But, I mean, they have to, you know, say yay or nay. Oh, I mean, yeah. People got to make plans. Yeah. And, like, the, 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 a lot of comics are, that are already booked for New Year's who are going to do gigs. So, it's like, but, you know, like everything, sometimes, like, a venue doesn't have their shit together. They don't know what they want. So, it's like, I just was like, hey, I'm here. Mm-hmm. I want X budget so I can give you X talent. And, like, I'll give you this kind of a show. Like, I know what to do. I'm just waiting to see if this guy's into it. So you say X budget for X talent, meaning that you would book other people as well, not just yourself? Yeah. So you would put a whole show together. It's not just you walk in, do your thing, and leave. Okay. I think, um, yeah, like a typical, like maybe a showcase would work. It depends on the venue, but like a standard show is a host, a feature, and a headliner. Like any comedy club you go to outside New York City, like we'll have that format. So you have like, you know... Chris Rock is headlining and he'll bring someone to feature who will do like 15, 20 minutes. And then you have a host who does like 15 minutes up top and warms up the crowd. But what I would do and like the popular format for clubs in Manhattan is like showcase style, which is like multiple people doing 15 minutes. That way you can like see as many comics, you know, as possible. So I would probably do, you know, like five comedians like I would host and do some time up top and like you know in between comics you you see you feel out how the crowd is going but yeah I would just book that way it sort of like keeps it moving and if somebody doesn't like somebody they don't have to sit through right you know right like that's true 45 minutes right or exactly exactly yeah. so now do you so do you do you have a following and these other people that you bring have a following? Is that how you, yeah. you get play people in? More so I am like getting more fans. It's like hard for me to say, but like I do have awesome. fans and like, you know, you kind of become more of a draw and like, right. yeah, of course you want to book people who also have a following and who have shit going on and who right. work hard and aren't lazy and have a good social media presence and like, yep. you know, do all the things you're supposed to do. Um, so yeah, then then, but a lot of times like a comic will be kind of a name, or they have a good credit. Like people will see, oh, they've been on Letterman or The Tonight Show right. or like Wendy Williams. Like oh, and then people will go, we go off again that. With Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams. <laughs> um, yeah. So sometimes people will co- go based on the credits of the comedians, or you'll be kind of a, more of a name, or like a combination, or like you know people will tell their friends and fans and. It's like a mix of that. I have to put you in touch. Um, a, a, a friend of mine, I might be doing, starting to do something with him. I know it's cold in here, and I it's have okay. the heat on, too. 
Um, I, I might be doing a, um, I like to do like a ha like happy hour things Ooh. because for me personally, like when I, you know, now going out again, mm -hmm. um, I'm old. So if I don't get moving early, I don't move at all. I know what you mean. Like after a certain time, I'm like, no, it's I'm like done. very if easy I, to stay. If I do not get moving, um, like to go out at, at, not, at 10 o'clock at night, um, like forget about it. I'm, mm. If I'm in, I, I see my bed, I'm done. Especially because nine times out of 10, I'm going to have to lay down with my kid to get him to go to bed. Yeah. And then once I lay down, I'm, I'm right. done. You're like, done. I'm like, okay, I'm not getting back up again. Or, I know what you mean. Cause it's like, if I, oh, I'm just going to do a pre lay down, a pre nap to my sleep. And it's, I always wake up like contact still in makeup, yeah. makeup All over here. Yeah. And then it's like, who, oh who crap. I like, God damn it. And yeah. you're running. Yeah. And nobody wants to do that but I find also when I used to work well when I had like a you know when I worked and I did hair and I was in the salon like we would get out let's say at seven o'clock mm -hmm. so it, I wasn't going home and then going out so like no. that was it like we were out seven o'clock we'd go eat We'd start drinking yeah. early. Yeah. And then, like, a lot of times, if it was, like, let's say a Thursday or a Friday night and it would get busy, by the time it got busy, we were going home at that point, which was mm. perfect because we didn't have to deal with all the nonsense. Yeah. So I like to do happy hour things. That's my own personal thing because I feel like, you know, it's easier, like, let's say on a Thursday night to do have an event from 7 to 9 yeah. where you can have fun. If you're having a banging time on a Thursday night, then you know what? You could stay out a little bit later and if you're a bag of shit on Friday, you only got to get through shit. Friday and you'll be good. But um, anyway, I digress. Uh, I, I may be doing something, a happy hour thing on Wednesday. There's a place called Central Stage and it is in Yonkers on Central Avenue and um, it's a, a, a venue. Mm -hmm. And so he has comedians and, and comedy shows all the time there. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Okay. So maybe I can put you in touch with them. Um, yeah, maybe. And see, uh, because I know he's trying to build that up and, uh, you know, it's, it's something to talk about. So maybe yeah. we can do that. But, um... All right, where was I going with that? We were talking about, okay, I'm good. What, um, different shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my website, and then, like, yeah, different kinds of shows you can book and produce, like, yeah. you know. Which is cool. So it's a whole package. It's not just, so you you do a lot more than just get up in front of people and, and make them laugh. Yeah, you learn how to host and, like, you know, run a room and, like, yeah, yep. producing everything from booking a lineup to making sure they're there on time to timing them, giving them the light, um, you know, managing if somebody's running late, you know, getting a flyer made either doing it yourself or paying for somebody to do it like securing everything with the venue like yep. you know uh and how nerve-wracking is it when you have other people and like they then who's gonna be who's late oh or yeah who doesn't they, and now you want to shoot like i'm anal like when mm -hmm. that's why like when you were like I, I'm, oh, I'm, i'll bad. be there at, at seven i was like what do you mean you'll be there at seven like i have to start at seven it made like, such a terrible first impression no it listen i understood <laughs> you with the train but i'm just saying and you walked in like like a stealth you know you were just like a like a like smooth like i live here i was yeah. like oh you yeah this is the barn and, and nice and quiet and everything you were fine there was no disruption um, but it's very, you know, especially like when you put a show together, it's very difficult when the people that are, especially performers, performers can be pains in the asses. Mm -hmm. Um, no disrespect to performers out there, but everybody sometimes is a diva. Totally. Some people are divas. And, you know, in my opinion, the way I do things, if you say you're going to be someplace at eight. You need to be there at seven four, you know, seven fifty, mm -hmm. and that's just the way you do things. I know sometimes, and I, I don't mean disrespect to you. I know what happened today, and that is, and this is a little bit different, and and I know the situation. But when you're doing a, a show a lot, I mean, not that we're not doing a live show, but you know what I mean. Like you're on stage, right? You know, I was able to start, and and you came in, you know, right after I was still talking when you mm -hmm. walked in, so we it's all good. But when you deal with other artists. It can become very challenging because if yeah. everyone does not have the same, and then you don't want to be like a bitch. Right. Although, hello, B is for bitch. You know, you don't want to be a bitch, but it's like, you know, you're supposed to be here at eight o'clock mm -hmm. and you're supposed to be ready to work at eight o'clock. You're yeah. not coming in now and setting up at eight o'clock. That doesn't look good when people walk in. What does that look like? It's very unprofessional. I think what it is, is like, um, 
you know, a lot of these comedy shows are free, so they are not oh, okay. prioritized as like a, a, a professional comedian who gets paid, who's passed, who makes money doing comedy. Like they're going to naturally not prioritize as much a free show as others. So then you get people who cancel the day of, cancel a couple hours before, and like a, a lot of that I really do understand because it's like I get so it. Like wait, I'm yeah. sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. So the, so. The, the show is free for the people watching it? Is that what you mean? No. Like, I'm just talking or, about comedy in general. Like, the reasons why comics bail or comics are late. Like, everything is very... Like, li- like there are a lot of free shows, like, free to go to and that are not paid in the city. It ranges the Meaning that gamut. the comedian is not getting paid. Mo- a lot of shows are not paid. Wow. Yeah, don't pay okay. comics. And, and I, you know, I have to say that that's another thing, too, is that a lot of venues that you go to, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't want to pay. Yeah. And so that makes it difficult because they want people that are going to bring people in, but they don't want to pay to bring them in. Of course. So it's like you can't have it both ways, you know? I mean, and I understand that it's a lot for a business to spend money when they don't know if they're going to make the money. Right. But it, you have to, you know, if you build it, they will come. You totally. have to build it. You have to spend the money and you have to know that you might go, you know, you might take it on the chin for that time because it is what it is and you might not yeah. make money that night, but you build up that rapport right. and then people will come back. And I think less likely a comic is less likely to bail on a show if it is paid. Then again, like I've, you know, I do shows where I pay the comics and they do bail. Like things happen and I understand because That's like. so unprofessional the, though. Well, like uh, it, it is part of it though because like let's say you get booked like, like let's say you get booked to do a show that pays $500 and it's for right. TV and you have to cancel on a show that was like, at, you know, it was at a bar. You were going to go, but it was free and it was an unpaid show. Right. So of course you're going to do different. the one that's money. Of course. Um, and that kind of stuff happens, which is why like, I don't fault people for that. Like gotcha. you can figure out like who is flaky, who is just unorganized, gotcha. who's bailing versus who actually got a better opportunity. And like, you know, gotcha. And so there, there's all kinds of shows. Like there's shows that, you know, charge, charge the audience but don't pay comics there's shows which really like, which sucks yeah there's huh. shows that you know charge the audience and do pay comics there's shows that it's like free and free so like there, it's all the gambit right and there's shows that are at real comedy clubs there are shows like in the back room of a bar where like the people are just they just really want stage time so yeah. so they're not like you know the bar is not going to give them a budget that you know that if they're just happy to have some place to work on jokes so it's like you have this whole range of stuff and like you kind of can tell after a while like okay who's being flaky who sucks who's just being unprofessional and who actually is like oh yeah this person's on tv they're doing great of you know they got something better like good for them like it's right. good to be busy um it's just like you have to do it for a few years to know Right. Well, that's with anything. But, you know, the thing is, is that I'm always one to work with people. You know, if if you're building something, then you build it together. But you can't be greedy either because if if Mm. as an entertainer, you know, I say to you, okay, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to build this up, and now your bar is packed. Right. And I'm the one who packed your place. Yeah. Now you need to do the right thing. Totally. You know? I mean, and it works hand in hand, you know, and, and a lot of people don't do that. You know, if you do a venue and, and they're sitting there counting how many drinks and mm. this and that, you know, you, you work together. And, and if, if you're honest and you're straightforward with somebody and you say, hey, this is the situation. This is what I hope to bring to the table. Not every every gig is going to be your best gig. There are right. times we have, you know, you have out like on with our shows like you have DJs that can pack a house Mm -hmm. and there are times that you go and there aren't that many people there because it happens it happens you know it it, you could be the best there could be a game on there could be the holidays it It could be you could be the very best but you know there's always look there's always going to be a circle there's always going to be a cycle and and you could be the best you could be the worst you could pack the place it could be empty it happens Mm -hmm. and everybody has to give and take but you also have to have a rapport and a reputation you can't walk into a place you know you walk in you try to do your thing you know you build it you have to have patience and 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 the the owners have to have patience Mm -hmm. and no one wants to spend money that they don't have right obviously but you know you got to give to get and and i think that people appreciate that and and um, I also think that um, you can't make people that you're hiring feel they're not worthy. Mm-hmm. You know, so if I'm trying to do a gig and I and I try to get people to do it with them with me, I'll say, listen, 
I know you're worth every penny that you're telling me you want and I would give it to you, but mm -hmm. this is the budget that I have. Yeah. So I'm not by any means insulting you and of don't course. think you're not worth this, but it's not in the budget that I've been allotted. Yeah. So if you don't want to do it, I completely understand, but yeah. I have a, you know, an understanding that we're trying to build this. And if we, if it gets built, then obviously, you know, it, things that will be renegotiated, mm -hmm. you know? So totally. it is, it's difficult though. And people don't understand that when you're the one hosting and then you're the one getting the, 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 the people, I mean, obviously if you, your people don't show up, that means instead of just hosting, you're going on, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but, like it's both like you're hosting and you're doing comedy. It's right. Like, but I'm trying yeah. to say what, but I know I obviously, but I'm saying if you had three acts, and one of the acts that, you know, night you find out isn't doing it, you're filling that 15 minutes, um, aren't you? Luckily, with this show in the, in Manhattan, like, I can get another comedian there within oh, okay. the hour. Like, okay. it depends where it is. Like, if you're way the hell out somewhere, then, yeah, you would be stuck, and someone has to do more time, or everyone does more time, which is fine, and Got you're it. prepared for that. But, yeah, like, and, um, you know, a lot of shows, like, there will be comedians in the audience who are just coming to support. So okay. a lot of times I'll be like, hey, so-and-so – this person's later had to bail. Do you want to go up? And right. then usually they're that's pretty cool. To yeah, do it. yeah. It's like open mic. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I actually have um, what day? Today's Tuesday, right? Today's Tuesday. So Thursday, um, I am doing a Christmas disco party. Ooh, it is one of my first events that I'm actually doing with a DJ. My other events, I have had uh, live music. I've had singers. Um, I had a Frank Sinatra guy. Um, I, the guys from Who's Your Daddy. I had my actually one of my best friends from high school. We did an acoustic jam out there um, two weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. Um, but this is going to be my music because mm -hmm. I love my dance music. I yeah. mean, I'm a rock and roller, but I like my, my dance music, especially if I'm drinking. I know that's my, you gotta brush your teeth. Well, that's for my son to brush his Aww. teeth. Oh, yeah. And, and that's, that's cute. I know I have all these, these little uh, things that come up on my phone. Do they come up on his, do he, does he have a phone or well, is this he your... has my old iPhone. So yeah, they, I think they do. They come up on the computer and stuff too, but you know, Aww, that's he, cute. He, he ignores those, but, uh, you know, Aww. yeah. Um, Okay, complete. I'll, I'll, I'll exit I should out. have, you, they should have those for like adults. Like, I could just have, I'll set an alarm. I'll set an alarm set on my boyfriend's phone. I'll be like, time to go down on me. I'll be like, who <laughs> put that in there? Who set that? That's awesome. I, I, you see, if I had somebody to do that to, I, I would. It's, I'll, I'm going to make a mental note on that one. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure I do that. I like that. I like it too. I like it. <laughs> Very well. Time. Let's just, you got to listen to your phone. Yeah. So. See that? So mm -hmm. that, that's like commanding via Siri. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Siri's in charge now. Siri, tell my boyfriend to go down on me. <laughs> okay, Chrissy. <laughs> Why don't you go down on yourself? <laughs> Yeah, if you could, you'd never yeah. leave the house. Because yeah. I know if I could, I'd never leave the I house. I would use all my sick days in that case. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah, because you would really be having a vaginal yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It would be your own. It would be your own party. That's funny. There's a party in my pants. Oh, mm. my God. That is really funny. Um, okay, wait. Let me just make sure I didn't pull this out. Okay. So, again, I want to just go back. So this Thursday, I have my Christmas disco party. It's from 7 to 9. Like mm. I told you, I like to go, you know, okay. early. And um, it is at uh, the Gnarly Vine, which is in um, New Rochelle. Do you know New Rochelle at all? I'm learning it more and more. Yeah. So this place, I don't know if you're around tomorrow or you're doing this anything. Is Thursday, right? To oh, yeah. Not tomorrow. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday, I'm, I'm so having good. dinner with a friend who's like just coming into town from Texas. So I'll be with her. But this sounds fun. I wish yeah, I it's, it's from 7 to 9 and it's at the Gnarly Vine. And it's a really cute, it's a tiny, quaint little place and it's like a wine bar. And mm. they really don't have a lot of stuff in there. They had like meat and cheese plates okay. and tapas and all this stuff. Charcuterie. Really, um, <laughs> it was re it's really cool. So it's on, uh, it's uh, 501 Main Street in New Rochelle. And mm -hmm. what's really exciting is that I have, I'm doing like giveaways, like holiday Ooh. giveaways. I'm not sure, I have to follow up, but one of um, my listeners and a friend um he santa may be coming too 
And I think he likes when we sit on his lap. (laughs) Who wouldn't? He likes when we sit on his lap and tell us whether we're naughty or nice. Yeah. Um, But we have, um, I have New Year's Eve tickets that I'm going to be giving away, courtesy of Tia Maria, events by by Tia Maria. Um, Mm. She is doing, uh, we have a, it's New Year's Eve at the Coliseum. Cool. In White Plains, which is oh really close to you. Yeah. So if that show doesn't happen, you got to let me know, and we'll have to get you and your boyfriend over there. Ooh. Um, we have our um, our own DJ uh, from Miami Mike Radio, um, Anthony Mangini, and then we have DJ Surge. Are you going to be there? I yes, I, I uh, unless um, Elmer J Fudd invites me um, to his mansion and yacht. I yes, I will be there. Okay. Um. So. Uh, Barry there has a Barry White impersonator or whatever. So oh. I have a couple of sets of tickets I am going to be giving away on Thursday night at the Gnarly Vine. So the only way for you to get those tickets is to get your ass down to the Gnarly Vine. And I have DJ Neurotic, Chris, uh, I forget his list, Chris, uh, but he goes by DJ Neurotic. And um, he's going to be playing some old school disco. And also, we're going to be giving out uh, free freestyle CDs made by DJ Neurotic. Um, and then I do have a few other surprise uh, gift giveaways Ooh. as well. Tia gave me something else. Actually, she gave me two other things. So I have a lot of giveaways. Um, so you got to come down. Uh, I will also be doing a giveaway for my show listeners as well. So anyone that cannot come down on Thursday, next Wednesday, I think that's the 26th, right? It's the day okay. after Christmas. Yeah. Next Wednesday, I am going to do a Facebook Live because next Tuesday is Christmas, so I'm not doing my show on next Christmas. Next Wednesday is the 26th. Next Wednesday, the 26th, I, probably like 8 p.m., I'm going to do a Facebook Live and I'm going to announce more... I have more tickets that I'm going to give out for for Tia's event. So what I want you to do is I want you to go on my social media pages. I want you to like it. I want you to share the post. And I want you to tag your friends because Mm. Tia wants some new blood. So you got to tag your friends and um, bring down some new people. So after you get your dollar gift wrap on the 26th. Oh, yes. Dollar gift wrap yeah. on the 26th. Yes, which we Chrissy is going to do a tutorial on how to yes. properly um, wrap gifts. Yep. Um, you can, I will, I'm going to announce. So this way my listeners um, can uh, can take advantage of that because that's pretty awesome. I don't even know. I think the tickets are like 35, 40 bucks. So that's, that's a, a great, real thing. That's a yeah. great it's savings. Like a value. It's value. And a, it's fun. She does a beautiful event. So, you know, you can get dressed up. You know, New Year's Eve is like the day you want to, I mean, I want to wear sparkles all the time. It has to be time. sparkles. I want to wear sparkles all I the mean, time. if you don't wear sparkles on New Year's Eve, like what, what kind of year are you going to have? You know what? Know. In my world, you should always shine. Yeah. So I always want to be as sparkly as possible. Yeah, I I agree. And it's a red affair to my Ooh. understanding as well. And I have these sequin hot red boots that Ooh. I got, which I think I might, I don't know. I have everything is so sparkly and okay. shiny. I'm going to have to change six times to make sure. I get just it wear it all. Fuck wear it. it all. I'll just yeah. put each thing on top of the other yeah. one. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Um, so come by Thursday night at the Gnarly Vine. All the information is on my social media. Um, check out Chrissy Mayer. Oh, sorry if you want to get her see, me. see, I'm boring her. No, it's like, I think I got up so early this morning and, uh, they say like, you know, I'm not getting enough oxygen to my brain. Well, it's certainly cold enough in here. And yeah, maybe so it's, it's chilly and my body is cold and my nose keeps running. Everybody probably yeah. thinks like, you know, I, I have, have like a problems. drug problem, yeah. but it's really just a runny nose. And I've been home for the past two days taking care of my sick kid. And, yeah. And and I actually been baking, so it's it's okay. I love baking. My house smells like I can't even t- I probably gained like six pounds just from smelling it because Aww. I had to make I figured I was grounded at home. I had so many things to do. Yeah. And I said, Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. So I baked and then he wanted to help me. You. And I'm like, Don't breathe on it, don't come near it, don't touch it, you yeah. know, like but it's not like, you know, he's definitely no. ill, but you know, I know I sounded terrible. To I know sometimes you like, you don't want your whole 
brownies to be. No, you, you know. can't have cooties in your no stuff. No cooties, you know, yeah. not for especially not for the holidays. You can't have cooties. Yeah. Um. Okay, so you go to chrissymare dot com. Um, you're on what Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, my website. Not on Snapchat anymore. I feel like that tide has turned for me. I don't even get the point of Snapchat other than those filters where everybody looks really good. Instagram uh, has all those and like Instagram stories too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm really still a little spazzle with with some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying, but I know when yeah. you do that, you do the pictures and stuff. Yeah. Like you we could do the... it right now. Like, so oh, you're on your Instagram. Can... Okay. Well, I'll look good. I like the filters. Let's do Yeah. The, the so filter. filter going into, so I, you know, where it says your story. Yeah. You hold that and it says add to your story. Okay. And then it's just us. Like we can do, you okay, know, like see. we could do, do like a little video, a... Oh, like a live, like, Hey, we're live. Live on Miami Mike radio.com. Be a true bitch. And then Woo-hoo! look, like you can see everybody watching at home. Yes. And then, so now it's playing that. Like this is what we just took. How cool is that? And you can do filters on it. Um, can, you, is there like a make me look 30 years younger filter? There is a filter for that. And then I can, <laughs> you know, you can tag people. You can do questions, you know. Oh man, do it. Tag Countdown. Do I'll something. tag you Make all up in cool. it. You can, you can, if I wanted, I could say that it's 28 degrees in here. It, it really it is. is. It's cold in here. I don't know. I have a heater on it. I feel like maybe I don't have it on heat, but. It's okay. Uh, you know, I'm like, I'm half Norwegian, half German. Like, I feel like I have, you know. Yeah, you got that blood. Viking, you know, jeans. What's yeah. your Instagram? It's just Karen. At, at, no, at it's uh, Real Talk. Oh, duh. Real Talk with Karen Stacy. All right, K-A-R-E-N. so now I'm tagging you. Um, so I want to remind you guys some of the shows that come on, uh, that are on MiamiMikeRadio.com. We have Mondays. We have The Ride Home with DJ Paulie, a.k.a. The Portuguese Prince, from 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, Mind Candy Mondays with DJ Rob Mush. From 9 to 11. Hopefully this year Rob Mush is coming on my show too. Um, Tuesdays we have uh, DJ uh, Steve, Simply Nice, uh, from 1 to 3. And of course me, Real Talk with Karen Stacy, 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. Uh, Wednesdays we have Lady DJ Lady E um, at 7 p.m. And then we have the Mayhem Loyal Listener Show. Uh, with Hamilton Czar and Maymay, um, with a different loyal listener guest each week, and that is on uh, from eight thirty to eleven thirty. <laughs> and um, Thursdays we have Gino uh, Caffarelli with uh, Throwback in the Day, and uh, again Thursdays we have the Traffic Dam with Jam. I always say Dam. Please tell me why. Probably because I hate traffic, so I'm like Dam. The Dam Traffic. The Dam Traffic. The the Traffic Jam. Um, with DJ Michael Anthony from 4 to 6. And then Fridays, again, we have uh, Steve, DJ Simply Nice from 8 to 10. And thank you, uh, Steve, for shouting out uh, my events on Thursday. Much appreciating the support. Um, Friday night sessions, then, we have with Tony Sanapi. Saturdays, we have the Gazi Show with DJ Gazi um, at 8 p.m., and then the Saturday Night Dance Party with our own Anthony Mangini, my 19th favorite DJ. <laughs> <laughs> he gave himself that, so I just had to That's say That's funny. It. Yeah. Um, so, again, please go on social media, like the page, tag your friends, um, and, and share my post to enter into our uh, giveaway for the complimentary tickets. And... Um, First, I want to thank you so much, Chrissy, for coming. Thanks for having me. I'm sweaty. Yeah, and for your boyfriend being such a sweetheart and uh, and putting us together, you're a sweetheart. I'd love to come see one of your shows. I love comedy shows. Yes, I'll give you comps. Yes, I would love to see one of your shows. Maybe the next time I have something, you can come. For sure. You know, if you're not out there trying to make people laugh, Mm -hmm. I'll get you up on the mic with me. Aw, fun. (laughs) Yeah, sounds good. Um. And I, I want to wish everybody um, happy holidays and a happy and a healthy new year. Um, always remember that uh, you never know what someone else is going through, so please be kind. Um, the holidays are very difficult for some of us that are missing people at the table. And while everyone is out there and they're joyous, which we all want to be, some of us have uh, broken hearts 
and mm-hmm. um, just be conscious of that and, um, you know, be patient um, and, and kind and, and try to maybe hold the door for somebody, try to give them a smile, tell them to have a great day, something, tell them that their tell shoes them are Tell them that their boobs look great. Yeah, tell them that, yeah. that their boobs look great. Exactly. Um, yes, I see Gina Marie. Um, you're the loyal listener for tomorrow night. Have a great show, sweetheart. Um, you're always a loyal listener to our uh, all of us on MiamiMikeRadio.com, so we thank you for that. Um, uh, we will be streaming, by the way, live on Miami Mike Radio for New Year's Eve uh, with Anthony Mangini, DJ Surge on the mix, the Barry White impersonator. So for anybody that does not live in the area, um, you can go on our website, MiamiMikeRadio.com and click listen and you will hear all the music that we are dancing to that night. So you could dance to it in your living room, Ooh. get some champagne, you know, um, and just dance in your living room. Um, and she is the Barry White guy, so if you're going to get lucky, that's probably the right thing to listen to, that right? Good. So maybe if you're home with My your boyfriend. Darling, I, yeah. I can't get enough of your love, baby. If you're home, you know, with your man and you're not out, then listen to Barry White. Yeah, good fingering music. Oh, my. Yeah. Or Siri. <laughs> Siri? What about that thing I told you to do? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Dim the lights, baby. We're ready to rock. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, again, I want to thank Tia Maria, uh, for donating the tickets to, um, myself and to all of you so that you guys can come and, uh, be a part of that. Uh, I will announce the other winners on Facebook live. Some winners will receive and my giveaways are going to be Thursday night. Like I said, I have gifts as well besides the tickets. Um, and then that Wednesday I will be giving away the remainder of the tickets. So in order to enter, you need to like my page, you need to share the, uh, post Mm -hmm. and you need to, um, take your pants off. Take your pants off. Yes. And take your pants off. I like yours better. Well, that's, that's kind of like tagging your friend. (laughs) You've been tagged. Yeah. Deal with this. Hopefully. Um, and I'm also thinking on, uh, so I will not be doing my show next Tuesday for Christmas. So Merry Christmas to everybody. I know it's not politically correct, but neither is my shirt. So I'm Mm -hmm. just going for it. Um, So I'm going to do an interactive show on New Year's Day. um, And I want you guys out there to be my guests. Uh, I did a show like that a couple of weeks ago. I had a really great response, wonderful interaction. And um, I think we'll talk about like New Year's Eve resolutions and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to, you can comment uh, on social media or uh, topics you want to talk about. We can interact. If you want to email me, you can email me Karen Stacy at Miami Mike Radio dot com or Karen at Karen Stacy dot com or me- message me, whatever it is. And, you know, I think that's what I'm going to do for New Year's. So I'd love your feedback and see what you want to do. Maybe if you're home on New Year's Day, chilling out. I think everybody's going to be hungover and just sitting down. So by 7 o'clock at night, you're going to be bored. You're going to want to do something, right? You're going to be thinking about your resolutions. And we're going to talk about resolutions because that's really a crock of shit because nobody ever does it. You do it for like the first two hours and then you're done, you know? It's really easy. New Year's resolution, I'm not going to drink anymore. When you're hungover as shit, you're not going to drink anymore. And then the next day when you're feeling better, you're like, yeah. I'll oh, yeah. just have one. <laughs> yeah, just one. Just one. It's not going to hurt. Um, so thank you, Chrissy. Thank again, you for having me. For, this is so for fun. For coming and, and, and coming here. And um, thank you all for listening. As I said, I want to wish you all a very happy and healthy new year. Merry Christmas. I, I really do love you guys. Without you, we would have no one to talk to. So I thank you so much. Thank you to Miami Mike Radio and... Love you guys. Love you, bye. See you Happy next year. Tuesday. Oh my God, next year. Ugh. 2019 Ooh. sounds so futuristic, doesn't 2019, it? 2019, the year of vaginal issues. The year of so <laughs> much itching. Yeah, I can't wait. Oh boy. On that note, bye. <laughs> oh my. Okay.